so hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel i know yeah it's been a very long time but yes we are here with another guest uh, we have anand gangadharan who is an analyst at american express hi anand can you please introduce yourself hi sanjya uh, thank you so much for having me uh, so uh, yeah my name is anand gangadharan i am an analyst at american express uh, i am from kerala uh, but born and brought up in delhi uh, right now working in gurgaon Uh, and i just graduated from vit velur last year oh that's amazing so uh, anand uh, i would like to ask you that how's number one you know how's the transition been from kerala to delhi how's that been like yeah so uh, like i said right i was born and brought up in delhi uh, so i am a delhi wala वैसे basically acha but just, Achha. yeah just my roots are from kerala so i am like kind of we can say best of both worlds so that's very good that's amazing for the That's amazing. So, Anand, let's move on to the first question. Uh, I believe that you know I want to ask you that how did you figure out your interest? Number one, how did you figure out that you know you want to get into uh, the software part or in the analytics part? And what was that journey like? Yeah. So let's let's start it. from the very basic right class 12 what do you exactly. want to do next exactly. so uh, i think probably when i when i was like getting into the 10th 11th the, that phase right when you start, uh, select your streams and everything i i kind of had a hunch towards uh, computer science at that time itself okay so i think that was pretty much sorted uh, i wanted to do something in computers that's how i pursued my 11th 12th coaching entrance and all that and finally got uh, into vit velour after that again like computer science is in itself a huge branch right so we're just experimenting with a lot of stuff different topics different i took up a lot many courses in different uh, so, uh, different fields in computer science and that's how finally i ended up in uh, analytics and data science and also uh, it's it's just hit and try like i'd honestly say because okay. there's a lot of uh, stuff to try out yeah okay so uh, just you know a uh, small check in questions here how much percentage did you get in 10th and 12th and was there a rank for vit or was there a competitive exam that you had what was that like because you know people watching might also have want to know that right right so uh, class 10th again doesn't really matter now but uh, it was a cgpa 10th okay uh, 12th uh, i think it was 93% in my cbse but again doesn't matter because at the end of the day you write your entrances right Right. So yeah, in entrances, I think my rank was around three thousand five hundred or something. Ten thousand. Uh, All India rank for VIT. That's actually amazing yeah. because so if I'm not wrong, about two two and a half lakh students sit for uh, the VIT examination. Yeah, that is. That's right. amazing. So yeah, I, I could get in easily in the first. Uh, like we have different categories in VIT, right? So first category, computer science itself. Uh, okay. So yeah, those are the. I, I think uh, you, you can pretty much get into uh, a good college with those. Uh, great, I think, yeah. Understood. So, Anand, as you mentioned, you know that once you figured out, you know, you did a a lot of hit and trial in order to find that you want to get into data science and analytics. That's one part. Uh, what steps did you take once you figured your interest out in order to, you know, excel in that field or maybe start a career in that field? Where did it start, and what steps did you take? Right. That's a that's a really nice question, right? So. Uh, when when you um, try out a lot of things a lot of these things sound interesting like blockchain crypto whatever exactly. that exactly like it it sounds very interesting and all right. but when you take up that first course and no, i'm i'm not just saying a refresher course or something like that uh, something very deep dive into that subject right. that's when you realize the all, all of the theory comes in and then it then it starts becoming boring right. so for data science uh, what i did was i i took up a course uh, which is called the ibm professional certification so i was like this is something is in, that that seems interesting let me just go into it like right in dive in uh, get to know it from like i had say from scratch right very scratch, so right. that was like seven or eight courses a whole bunch very details so that is when i realized after after doing all that a i got a good uh, background of the whole subject and okay. b that is when i realized okay this is what i'm dealing with so i do really like it or not so yeah that was the journey i'd say perfect so i think uh, you can say, you can share the link of that course so that i can you know put it down for people who want to start off with, yeah, sure. in such a field right so uh, 
I want to ask you that, uh, you know, we move on to the next question that uh, what was the recruitment criteria for American Express? Uh, was it through your campus or did you apply off campus? If it was on campus, how many rounds of interviews were there? Can you just brief us about that? Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, so I think first of all, the basic criteria, uh, like uh, first of all, it was an on-campus offer. Okay. And the basic criteria for it was a CGB of 8.5 uh, from my college, right? like I said, from the IT. So 8.5 was engineering 8.5. You need an 8.5 in engineering. Right. Was there any right. backlog uh, criteria that, you know, students must, I must don't not think have so. backlogs? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. Like, uh, again, for VIT placements, you need to clear all your backlogs, right? But okay. there are certain companies who uh, mention it that there should be any backlogs in your whole history. But I don't think American Express at least had that kind of a requirement. Uh, but yeah, uh, 8.5 was the was the cutoff uh, uh, CGP, I'd say. Okay. And then again, like the very basic thing, right? All of these super dream companies, what they come up uh, right in front uh, is, is, is uh, your... What are super dream uh, companies? If you can just uh, tell yeah, me. Yeah, so again, in VIT, uh, companies who come in uh, give you a different set of packages. Right. Right? And packages, I mean the, the CTC and all those stuff. So the, the college basically divides these companies into different, uh, uh, say, categories like regular or dream or super dream super dream is kind of like 10 12 uh, plus lp understood packages. understood yeah yeah for so for for all of the super dream companies the very basic thing is being very thorough with uh, if like it's it's a coding or or software based company right. or, or software based role that they are coming for your coding your uh, problem solving skills all of these things are very very basic so for american express as well the first round was coding and uh, being again uh, because the role was for an analyst, something that is very important is SQL. So okay. there was a lot of focus uh, on SQL uh, and different MongoDB and different kind of things that are related to all of these uh, SQL or query languages. I'd say so there was a little bit of uh, emphasis on Python as well. Okay. So these are basically the the tools or the languages that are used in analytics. So that is why the focus was there. A particular like uh, category of the examination was there. Understood. And uh, that was this, yeah, that was basically round one. Round one is basically the written round or the coding round. Okay. Then I had uh, three rounds of interview. Oh. So again, uh, unlike other companies, yeah, uh, these rounds were like not really segregated as like uh, tech purely technical or purely managerial. It was okay. not like that. Everything was a mix, I'd say. Understood. So for round one, uh, even though every every company offers round one as a technical round. Uh, I was asked bo both questions on technical, like uh, basic coding stuff, uh, SQL queries, syntaxes, or logic wise, something like that. And as well, uh, there was another panelist who basically asked me about my projects and the different things I, that I did during my college dinner. That is just like not related to coding, but some projects or some extracurricular stuff. The second round was again a mix, uh, but it was mostly a managerial round where uh, what the what the panelist was asking me was to like he was trying to test out my problem solving skills so it had an uh, element of uh, puzzles as well i'd say okay so not it was not like technical but certain certain kind of puzzles like guesstimates maybe guesstimates yeah and i'd say puzzles because it it, it actually was like the things you solve like riddles and stuff right so okay. you just had to put your brains out and like just just think through uh, how to how to solve okay. these things Right. So yeah, uh, that was round two and round three was more like a discussion with the hiring manager. Uh, it's not the HR, it's the actual team leader who hires you, who sits in front of you and has a very genuine open discussion. Okay. So it's not like an interview or, or a question answer round. It's more like the man hiring manager just like letting out what the team does and uh, being very open. This is what you will be doing once you join the company. and. Uh, so that like both of you are on the on the same page, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about getting a job, but the hiring manager is letting out if these are the things you do. Are you even interested in that? So that's a very that that I think like made the deal for me. Like that culture, right? When right. somebody just like offers that job to you and is, is very open of um, open about what exactly is going on. So that's right. that's a deal breaker. It's actually an amazing yeah. thing. So Anand, all of these rounds that you actually mentioned, were they elimination rounds or uh, did you have like the result after all the rounds were done and there were a list of shortlisted students? 
no no uh, these were elimination rounds yeah understood so uh, if you had to summarize some skills or the skills required for this position or for an ideal candidate that amex looks at right by the way guys amex is american express so for those who don't know uh, we when we suggest amex amex i think we're going to talk about american express so uh, yeah and so uh, I, you mentioned that you know you need sql uh, a hold on uh, dbms uh, coding in terms of coding you need python and logic let that be puzzles let that be guesstimates any other thing aptitude or something right so in general i'd say what they're looking out for is are you able to adapt to whatever kind of a product you are put in right okay that is what they act, are actually just aiming for okay. and sql or coding or problem solving skills or puzzles all, all all these are just like uh, some kind of a reflection that you can that's the only thing but the ultimate conversation they're trying to have is okay. are you able to adapt to a new product whatever we throw it at you that's all what they want to do understood moving on to the next question anand uh, can you tell me that you know you told me that the campus uh, the sorry the placements were on campus right so did your undergraduate university vit help you with placements uh, or like did you, did they provide you certain uh, opportunities or how was it like yeah so first and foremost right uh, i was uh, like attending placements at the time when the pandemic just broke in okay and that was a really really like ambiguous hard time for everyone especially okay. for us who just wanted to get a job and uh, were like confused even if companies are going to recruit because companies I think were there's a lot of uncertainty at that moment i can imagine yeah. right right so this is something i really want to highlight over here that my college actually brought in like too many good companies at that time which okay. was like probably the biggest sigh of relief for us uh, because I, even i i knew people in good colleges who were running around haphazardly because that was not happening in their colleges but for us there were a tremendous number of good companies coming us co- coming coming into the placement process every day so yeah kudos for that like first of all that happening in itself is a big thing and apart from that yes my college did provide a lot of resources uh, because over the years they have collected a lot of uh, uh, exam patterns and all the stuff like okay. aptitude exams mm-hmm. sample coding uh, questions and all so they have put everything on a platform and they are offered it to all of the students so that did happen to yeah perfect i think i can absolutely attest to this because i am also a student from vit velour and i know that uh, the amount of companies that come to our college and i think it's tremendous you know uh because uh, the companies the names that come i think they're huge and i think they are not affected by anything that happens on the you know on the planet let that be covid on it you know in its peak everyone's at home but companies are still recruiting students are getting placed there's 100% placement so i think kudos to vit on that and if people if you students are watching this video i think you should give it give it a shot if you get vit that's one thing that's really good <laughs> so uh you know and then moving on to the next question i would like to ask you that how difficult is it you know uh, or rather how difficult was it to manage your college life with your extra curriculars if you were a part of any and you know also you know your friend circles and you know a lot of things that you need to do inside as a student you know when you're a hostel girl so can you please let us know about that sure sure yeah uh so again uh, back in back in back during my college days right i was a part of the dramatics club and uh, that that kind of was everything for me my whole college life i'd say because i was very active in that uh, and something that uh, i have always made sure is that everything i do uh, has a reason behind it and that basically is 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 a passion for me basically so dramatics again nobody forced me into it uh no it it was not like a, a requirement uh, through the degree i'd say or anybody wanted to right. do it it was purely that something i just wanted to do okay right. so people people uh, play video games for fun play uh, watch netflix this was some kind of passion for me so okay and there was nothing i just wanted to do that that was the driving force for me and that's why it was effortless right next comes studies studies again uh we have to get through studies there were some subjects that i really liked so i just like passionately again pursued it 
the rest of them just fell like a, I'd say like a Tetris game just fell down and just fit in perfectly. Uh, but I'd say probably one place where I made sacrifice was my social life because I didn't really go out uh, with my friends often uh, for, for football games or movies, I'd say. So that was something I, I missed out, yes. Uh, again, uh, there might be a way to manage that too. Uh, but again, I, I, I could not. Uh, right. But no regrets again. Uh, because that was the amount of uh, effort I put into dramatics and my studies. And both of them turned out to be really well, according to me. So at the end of the day, it, it, it all went fine, yeah. No, I think uh, you're absolutely right. Because, uh, you know, you should always prioritize to anyone watching this once you find out the things you love let that be let that be let that be four things you love you know apart, apart from your studies uh, it's always about you prioritizing that because that helps you uh, mentally and also at a very physical level because you know everything is connected if students and people find out a way to prioritize the things that matter to them the most i think they'll be the most sorted when it comes to managing time and achieving their goals. So yeah, I think moving on to the next question, there's a check-in question to this. You told me that, you know, you missed out on social life, right? And so now when you're a working class, and I would rather say that you enter the corporate world, you know, and you're again living alone, uh, but this time you have a lot of uh, freedom because you're in Delhi, there is no hostel. So do you still actually find it difficult to manage, you know, your social media or maybe your friend circle or if not, how is that going? You know, how is this scenario going when you're uh, in the corporate world and not in the hostel? Right. So again, uh, I'd say one, one puzzle piece, the major puzzle piece, which was dramatic, right? That is temporarily taken off. Due to okay. two reasons, once uh, one is there is no drama club as such now, okay. and the second of all, it's it's a pandemic, right? So there are no uh, theater uh, theater teams, I'd say theater organizations that are very uh, like uh, going out and performing and practicing every day. That's Understood. not being ha happening very regularly. So yeah, there's a there's a gap over there which is kind of being f filled up now uh, with a lot more social uh, activity, I'd say. So yes. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going out making new friends. Uh, again, and again, and especially in the corporate setup, right? Uh, connections and networking is very, very important. It's the most important thing. So I've been like focusing on that too right now. Yeah. So I think, yeah, whatever you missed out, you're trying to cover up that. So that's, a, that's an amazing thing, right. actually. Really happy for you. Uh, moving on to one of the most important questions of this video. I always ask all the guests that come to my podcast is that, okay, you know, getting the job of an analyst is fine. You told the people that this is what an analyst does, you know, that this is what uh, the recruitment procedure was like, but that's one ball game. A very different ball game is that what do you actually do as an analyst, right? What's your day-to-day -day activities? Because students like me and maybe my juniors and a lot of people don't know that, you know, they get selected and then they realize that, okay, this was not meant for them. So I'm trying to provide this value through this video that it can benefit people where they can understand that, okay, this is what an analyst does at American Express. So can you please put light on that? Right. So again, I wouldn't be able to really answer what does an analyst do at an American Express because okay. we have very different diverse uh, fields inside okay. American Express Okay. In, uh, and analysts as well. Okay. So we have strategy teams, we have uh, decision, decision sciences teams, we have capabilities teams. So all of these are analysts and all of them do a very different kind of job. So where I fit in is basically the capabilities world. So I am a risk uh, analyst, which is an analyst of product development. So basically uh, all, of, all of my colleagues as well, who were selected from BIT as well, right? Uh, they were put into different product teams. So basically what we manage are different products. What I manage or my team manages uh, is is called the ODL, which is basically in 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 very simple language. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of data, right, uh, out there, and somebody has to make sense of all that data exactly. for different teams, different modeling teams, digital scientists, uh, sciences teams, all of them to make sense of it. Like because we can't just take up raw data and just like uh, put right. it out there for some kind That's of. It's very unstructured, right? But, right. So there needs to be 
income structure right so that is what basically we do uh, okay. we get all of those uh, variables uh, variables or, or, or data points i'd say uh, there is a team who finds out what plus minus has to be done with say a data point and b data point and we basically code it and form some kind of a structure for that data to like trickle down into some kind of a table or or, or a database with a lot okay. of tables uh, having uh, refined data points is what i say so that downstream uh, teams can do their analysis on that perfect so what so you actually in short this is data warehousing uh, perfect i was what, just going to say that yeah i was just exactly going to say that so yeah i think you make you make the data in such a way that uh, can we can we put it in a way like uh, you are a data analyst where you make some analysis of the data that provides people who look at that data some something about that data so that they can make few predictions from that data or maybe something like that is it is it that or that's different um a little bit different i'd say uh, the analysis part is done by a different team what we do is take up their analysis yeah yeah as, as in as in we, we don't really look at that raw data somebody else looks at the raw data and tells us what to do with that raw data that is what we do so you execute you execute it right. and you make it into a right. uh, into a readable out some kind of a refine yeah okay yeah. Correct, correct and then another another analyst of that team would look at that output and make predictions on that right right yeah. perfect perfect i think i think we are on board with that so yeah if people are wondering about what an analyst does this is what they do guys moving on to the next part uh, as you mentioned you know all of these points we've already discussed about it can you can you actually tell us the skill sets a student should focus on in order to you know start a job in this career uh, like i understand uh, you told them, you told us about amex you know but overall in this career what skill set sorry skill sets should uh, students focus on so that they can you know achieve their goals right so again uh, looking at an analyst right an analyst role uh, it it it's very diverse in different companies i'd say but in general the technical skills as i mentioned already, already right yeah uh, that problem solving skill is is probably the most important Understood. and uh, basically making sense of data uh, that comes in two ways one is understanding what the data point is different data points what would suit what would not suit and querying them so that is where hive and sql and all that stuff comes in so making sense of that data is in in like in in in, in crux i'd say what an analyst does right so yeah uh, problem solving skills sql so i think languages like python are very easy very uh, comfortable to that particular field so that uh, again uh, analysts uh, unlike i'd say uh, program hardcore programmers analysts also have to do the uh, the talking with the shareholders part too as well right? communication so you do the analysis right right so you do the analysis but you have to convey that to the people who don't really understand the coding part so that is again a very important part so yeah communication skills as well perfect i think uh, people who are watching this video you know no matter if you're a very if you come from a very hard coding background i would like to always and i always in fact the, to the people i talk to i always put emphasis on uh, number one networking and number two communication skills because i think they are very uh, correlated Uh, i might be wrong here please do correct me if i am wrong but i think that if you focus on your communication skills if you can present yourself in a way that will be likable by others or maybe not likable but you can present yourself in a way you think it's right i think that wins the game because sometimes what happens is in fact most of the times what happens is that people are very very brilliant you know they have something in their mind that 99% of the people don't right but they can't just present it and that's what actually restricts them after a certain point in their life because yeah right you must be from a very good programming background or a technical background or a non technical background but at some point of your life you might be leading a team because you're that good at it and for you to lead a team you need to have good you know communication skills you need to have that ability to converse with people you need to have that ability to network with people so this is what i put emphasis on and people who are watching this i think for the last two videos i have been telling this please please do focus on your communication skills and your networking skills because that wins the game 
what, what do you think about it very true very true uh, sanadev what you what you said right yeah. so uh, something what i've noticed is a lot of people focus just on those coding platforms right. and stuff when exactly. they're in college right first year itself coding seekhna hai is is what they think of all yeah. the time uh, and that probably will get you a good job but five years down the line there is a lot you you have just lost out on because a lot of skills that you could have developed in your four years of college that is making connections and there is a lot to try out that is the most important part in college right there is exactly. no uh, exactly you you're not losing out on anything there is ample amount of opportunities to just try out stuff and fail at it and that is something you can't really uh, expect in the real world out there because there every mistake might take you back of like a 10 steps of 20 steps or something but in college there is nothing like that it's just like uh, you can do whatever you want to in a way absolutely i so, think yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah no no please sorry go ahead no no that's all so basically yeah uh, you you need to focus on your extracurriculars or whatever mm-hmm. you want to do right. uh, to build kind of connections and talk to people and get to know the world more that is very important in this four years yeah and you know it's not about just just build, building the connections it's about the friendships you build you know you might be at you might i know this is going a little off topic but i think it's really important here because we've brought this up you might be at the best level in your life you know like you might have the best package but if you don't have those friends or that family or those people to share that happiness with i don't think there's a point you know i personally don't think that you know that there's no sense of achievement because uh, when you have friends when you have people who you confide in you share so many things with them you share your failures you share your uh, you know you share your victories with them and when they see you grow and when you see them grow i think that's a tremendous feeling so yeah guys i think you should you should be a part of extracurricular activities you should put yourself in that uncomfortable spot you know let that be anything just go and talk to people maybe you know that might you might think that that's a very big thing right now because you're in your college but as anand mentioned you know 5 years down the line when you have to talk to a client and you don't have any option of backing out what do you do i mean what do you do so that's like true, yeah. you can make a mistake over there right so rather just make a mistake in your first second third fourth year nobody will judge you on that so please do focus on this i think the crux of this is communication skills is key you know networking is key putting yourself in uh, uncomfortable situations is key and if you're a student this is the best time to you know make sure and you know tap this untapped mine that you can get into right it's a gold mine that you can get into so yeah perfect i think uh, let's move on to the next question <laughs> we've been uh, talking about this a lot i would like to ask you that uh, Anand, if you had a chance to go back in your past, right, four years back, or maybe maybe in your past, let that be any time, and you know you had a chance to fix certain things, what would those be? Not just mistakes, anything that you would like to fix. Okay, so just to clarify, is this like related to the uh, career or the placement thing, or in general? I think it's. I think you know personally when I when I ask people this question, what I've understood is uh, not not just through videos, but whoever I've talked to, I think it's very correlated because you know people make something or the other, and that affects a lot of their decision in the long run. Yeah. So, what is that thing that you think that you know you might have changed? and you know you you think that a lot of students starting their careers uh, might make that same mistake so if they look at this video and they they can always be vigilant about that right so that can actually help people right so again to be very honest i have gone blank at that question uh, because i'm not saying everything is perfect yeah uh, but i am very happy with whatever has happened right uh, so uh let's just say, uh, uh, let's just take the case of uh, me preparing for my placement right so there was a point uh, again not right now but during that placement prep time uh, there was a point in time where i thought did i start too late so right. this is something even i uh, like uh, whenever juniors contact me for uh, some, some kind of advice re- regarding preparation everything right. what i tell them is start a bit early right 
what i did uh, this is again like probably the biggest gamble i have played in uh, but i started my placement prep right around march when the pandemic hit it. and my placements were in july so that is just like giving me four months or something but luckily for me yeah uh, luckily for me uh, because the pandemic happened college shut down i was at home there was nothing to do so i just put in 12 15 hours each day doing my prep so that was like kind of very intense very short span of time but somehow i managed to put it and like be very prepared to the eventually the company what i got in right so that was just like pure timing is what i say but again something that that was again a really big gamble right so something what i could have done is probably start a few months earlier but this was again something i planned because again like i said right i was very involved with dramatics and everything and i had see certain plans till february uh, and i had in mind that i would start eventually in march and right. eventually that is what happened but again this just fell into place by chance is what i'd say uh, this was probably some uh, something i would have regretted uh, if things wouldn't have taken uh, like the right turn but yeah i, I again uh, if if you're like going for those core uh, software uh, positions probably start early like like a year would be i i think year, year an year is a like a great time uh, that's that's all that's required for even if like getting the basic language right or the problem solving skills or practicing them out and here is a good time so but but do give that year yeah what yeah what i'll do is that you know you might have the resources that you used and everything uh, guys i'll yeah. put down all the resources in the description box and i'll make sure that you know you all can refer to those resources and uh, you know benefit from that and i would like to also add one more thing over here that is uh, you know to be very honest if you ask yourself honestly you know it that will you when is the right time to start you know like uh, anand you knew it that okay i can do it i can pull 15 hours of study for four months and i can make sure to do it but what happens is that you know a lot of people i really want to put this out straight that a lot of people what they do is they ask their seniors and their seniors will tell them their seniors might be the most brilliant people in the room uh their seniors might tell them that you know you you'll do it in a month you'll do it in a month but everyone's learning capacity grasping capacity is very different so uh you know i think here you should trust your instincts number one you should always give more time as anand mentioned and make sure that you know you're never late right you're never late that okay now it's done the company is coming tomorrow and you haven't done anything also uh one thing that i would like to put here is that okay fine if you're very late a lot of students that i have seen in my batch and also my seniors is that uh once a company goes they lose all the hope you know they lose that okay i am done with placements but that should not be the case you know because fine i think you've lost out on one company but there's the you know there's a whole placement season waiting for you so you cannot let one failure decide your final outcome right what if and trust me guys i think uh, anand even you would attest to it that a lot of people i have seen i'm not encouraging that you know you try this out or you do it but if you miss out on something let that be a, an exam or let that be a placement don't let your future get affected because of that decision because i have seen a lot of people not getting their dream jobs and then landing into a job they would have never imagined you know just because here's the difference because that guy or that that person actually uh, you know told themselves that okay boss mujhe aaj se mere paas jitna time hai isme mehnat karni hai and made sure to do that and executed and get what they wanted and i've seen a lot of people i trust me i have seen a lot of people who with one setback they just decided okay they will not get a job and they don't get a job and they are right. way more hard working way more smart than the people who landed that job just by putting in the effort so if you miss out on that please make sure to keep putting in that effort you know because that's what i feel is very important right right very true and just like adding on one point on to that right please please um this 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 mindset right during placements that uh, like one one company just goes off and uh, you're thinking ki mere mein kya galti hai exactly. is the question that comes to my mind right. thankfully what i had in mind was mere mein galti hai i know i'm not prepared and i have to work hard so i think 
cultivating that mindset during especially a crisis time like a placements right that is very important because people people go into that self pity mode but that doesn't help you anywhere you have to know that people are better than you who are getting the right jobs and eventually and this is again like this is i what i what i've seen over one year right like because it's been almost one year i've been working all of my friends have been placed in different companies right. and what i've noticed eventually you fall into the company with your like the wavelength matches right exactly that happens i was just and that is okay. very yeah. yeah something it's 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 a very uh, bizarre thing i'd say yeah. but this is very yeah. true like, yeah, yeah yeah you would want to be in one company you end up falling into another company but you you actually know like that is where you belong and i think over the years is the, what you understand i ultimately this point yeah i think right 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 and i think that's a very good point you know you need to be open in in my first video also i remember talking to sama that uh, you should always ask for feedback you should always ask for feedback you know uh, you should ask your friends for feedback you should ask your parents for feedback you know before any interview you should try giving out a mock you know what we do is we shy away from this ki nahi main na company mein hi karunga ye and then we make huge blunders in the company with the company please ask for feedback you know you might you might you know be made fun of earlier in front of you but this works miracles you know i think this has happened with so many of my friends and even me you know before a company comes there is one thing that your friend might tell you or one thing your parent might tell you or one thing your guardian might tell you and that thing just sticks to you during the placement and that's what is asked again and you just nail it and get the job so please do ask for feedback sure. guys it's very important right i think uh, let's move on we we've, we've discussed a lot on this topic but yeah it was very necessary uh let's move on to the next question anand uh you know now that we spoken so much about networking and all the opportunities does your company provide networking and upskilling opportunities does amex do right that? so yes uh, a big yes to that i'd say uh, first of all yeah we do have uh, a regular like set of connects that happen not just with your leader your skip leader or like your the leader above that is just like you can really sign up for each, anybody like uh, all, uh, throughout the leadership uh, you can just sign up for anyone and probably you'll get a connect uh, like in a month or so so that's just like open wide like anybody in the organization you can just meet up with vice president senior vice president wow. uh, group presidents wow so it's 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 a very informal connect to it's not like something that you need to very uh, be be worried of or you need to prepare a lot they are very open very like uh, very candid is what i'd say so yeah networking events happen a lot uh, upskilling again yes uh, there is this platform called linkedin learning which is like free for all employees right uh, there are a huge number of good uh, courses on there uh, other platforms like udemy coursera all of these things again uh if anybody any any of the colleague any of the employee takes up a course or uh, the company reimburses that too wow. so yeah that's so, actually a lot like, like very the company actually believes in upskilling their own talent so that is something i've really noticed at american that's an amazing thing that's actually very good i think companies that do that deserve a very big thumbs up because i think your um you know your biggest your biggest asset is your manpower you know you might best you might have the best best systems and best technologies but until and unless you don't have a good working culture and you know good opportunities for all uh, it goes to vain you know uh, moving ahead let that be any organization in fact you know moving ahead on an ending note i think we've had a very good discussion i have two questions to ask you uh one question that you know we've discussed your journey in detail but one thing that comes to my mind is that what significance did luck have in your journey do you consider yourself to be lucky that you got the job or do you consider yourself to be amongst those people who work very hard in order to get that job where do you fall okay so uh the right answer to that would be i think according to be both right so luck again yes uh, i do believe in this thing right there the Uh, you are at the right place at the right time so that is very important in life uh, but to uh, for that to happen right hard work is a very big ingredient to that 
so when you, when you put out yourself you put in those hours to do anything to like achieve whatever you want to uh, it's 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 that movie dialogue right puri shiddat se chaho to kainat lane ki right that that's the thing man like that is what i have experienced at least in my journey so far when you are are like out there trying to do something trying to get a goal eventually like the whole world tries to help you on that so that is where the luck factor comes in it's it's not a lottery kind of a thing that okay out of the world you get something but when you are moving towards that thing eventually things start to come into you you are eventually going to reach that yeah so yeah uh, luck is an important factor but you have to be lucky uh, and for that to happen you need to work hard yeah understood that's amazing that actually an amazing advice So the last question, you know, uh, is that did you get any offer from another company? Number one, if you did not, did you apply for in any other company after you got Amex? And also, do you think you worked for a year right now? Right. Although I I can understand what your answer would be, but I would like to ask you that: Do you think you made the right decision working at Amex? Okay, so uh, first question first, right? I I did get another job offer along with Amex as well, uh, which was Robert Bosch. Uh, but yeah, uh, eventually I, I decided to stick with Amex itself. Uh, second question, so uh, whether it was a good uh, good choice or not, uh, I think there is no uh, no doubt about it. Like, it. This is probably the best uh, thing that has happened to me, and this is like very. I'm, I'm I'm I might get emotional on that I'd say because the culture it's not about just the work and the day to day things that I do but the people I work with right amazing people amazing talent this company has and something that we are very uh, open about and something that we like repeatedly uh, uh, are vouching for is like doing the right thing so that is something that comes up in our conversations every day. and uh, this is basically what our product is also right like because there are n number of companies who might be paying out much much more i'd say uh, yeah. to, to 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 their employees and all but ultimately what we believe in like as as amex colleagues is uh, is our product we believe very uh, uh, it's 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 the best thing on earth is what we believe but it's course, not just about the product but about that's your product yeah you were saying it's not about the product yeah, right so again the product and the services right like customers are are everything uh, and we do everything the right way this thing is again like reinforced every time so each and every it, it's not just about big decisions but even the day to day tasks right understood everything is ha- like is is based on that particular mindset of doing the right thing so yeah i think more than anything else it's the right people i am in touch with which makes me very happy in my day to day tasks yeah. so yeah uh, very happy yeah amazing amazing i think uh, this is a very inspiring journey anand and this this will actually inspire a lot of people thank you so much for you know giving in so much time and you know giving your uh, giving your uh, free time in this and actually helping out so many people i'm really grateful for that uh, other than that i think i would like to you know people who are watching this i'll uh, note down and i'll put down all the resources that anand referred to i'll also attach your linkedin profile if people want to reach out to you they yeah. can if you have any other yeah. questions although sanadhi has covered all of these questions but still yeah. if you have any questions uh yeah i think thank you so much anand thank you so much for this thank really you thank you for having me like this this was great like the conversation was itself very enlightening so yeah thank you so much i'm i'm really grateful for that other than that other than that guys you know all of you watching the video thank you so much for subscribing if you haven't please do hit the subscribe button uh, you know like the video if you really liked it if you've not please hit the dislike button and let me know in the comments that what i can improve on you know because as i mentioned it's all about feedback please let me know the places where i can improve on so that i can make sure to make those changes in my next videos and please please do stay tuned for all the further updates we have a lot of lot of content coming up and yeah i think see you all have a good day bye anand peace thank you so much bye guys bye bye thank you